Hello everybody, my name is Tony and I'm back here in the Everyday Counts building and we have an hour together for chair yoga, so welcome. Before we start, make sure that the chair you're on is stable and comfortable for you and that you've got a little bit of space around you so if you wave your arms around you won't be bumping yourself. Feet it around about a comfortable distance for you and that's going to be different for each of us. You can pick up the toes, pick up the balls of the feet if you like, even the heels, and just tap those feet around, squish the toes, anything that feels comfortable for you. And then, mindfully placing the soles of the feet down on that support underneath you. Really waking up the awareness of that support underneath you, noticing if you're putting more weight in your heels, the balls of your feet, the toes, if the toes are scrunching, if your weight is distributed to the outside of your feet, the inside, one foot more than the other. And then take a little bit of time to just play with that and even things up. Notice all the places that your feet are touching support and notice the places on your feet that are also not touching support. So maybe even the arches of the feet or underneath the arches of the toes. Take a breath in when you're ready. Exhale it out. Send all your awareness downwards. Mm -hmm. You can even imagine if you like roots drawing downwards from your feet all the way down into the earth, connecting downwards. And down those roots. You can send anything that no longer serves you or you don't want to be dealing with during the next hour. So thoughts, anything at all, just allow the earth to absorb it all so you can be present in this moment. Drawing your awareness when you're ready up towards your seat and deciding whether you wanna sit into the back of your chair for support or if you wanna sit away from the back of your chair. And we'll do the same thing here. In fact, you can start just by when we were um, wiggling the feet, rocking from side to side and noticing those two bony bits underneath you, which are called the base of the pelvis. Settling that evenly as evenly as is comfortable for you into the chair. So noticing if you're sitting more to one side than the other, to more to the front of the pelvis or the back of the pelvis and play around with that just like you did with the feet to get that balance of what feels good in your body. And that'll again be different for each of us. Take a breath in when you're ready and exhale. Allow the weight of your upper body to sit deeply into that support of your seat and your feet. From there, there's a lifting up through the spine as if the spine was getting alert all the way up to the base of your skull and the crown of the head. And then allow those shoulders to soften down away from the ears, but broaden through the collarbones so we have this width across the upper body too. When you're ready, once more, big breath in. Exhale it out. <sighs> and then we start to just tune in. You're welcome to close your eyes or soften your gaze as you do that. And just notice. Notice how you're feeling today what you're bringing with you into your practice. There's a lot of things on your mind, a lot of emotions present. And again, at any time, if something keeps cropping up, you can always send it down into the earth via those roots so it can be absorbed downwards. Notice how your physical body is feeling today. Notice sensations that are present. Try and stay away from the stories. Notice different uh, areas in your body that may need you to take extra care of today which, as you're moving forward. Notice places that feel strong, but also notice places that feel quiet, that feel like there's no awareness there at all. So we're not just focusing our awareness on things that where we feel discomfort or tightness or tension. And then take another few breaths here 
And on those exhales, just let go of some tension. So keep the alignment in the body to what is comfortable for you, but then start to release some of the muscles so you feel comfortable and at ease here. You can take as long as you like doing that. And then when you're ready, starting to pay attention to your breath, your inhales and your exhales. Steady and smooth. Starting to lengthen the inhale and the exhale in your own time. Maybe breathing in and out through your nose if that's comfortable for you or another way of breathing that is best for you today. There's no right and wrong. The only reason I say breathing in and out through the nose is that this tends to reduce the stress response. But only if it's comfortable for you. With those longer breaths in and out, steadying and smoothing that breath as best as you can. We'll keep that breath however it is for you, but let go again of any efforting, just like we did in the physical body. Take a breath in, and then allow the breath to settle down into an easier breath, so it's almost effortless. With that longer, smoother, and easier breath, we're gonna root down through our feet and our seat and lift from there and widen. From here, with the very tip of your nose, just starting to move natural, easy movements that come to you. Now you can go in circles, figure of eights, but I also encourage you to just move in a way that feels right for you. Now anything I guide you in can be started off with simply imagining, moving, building those neural pathways, imagining as best as you can how that would feel for you. And then start off small, slow, as if it's a little bit like a dance with the breath, the breath always leading, the movement being present with in the breath. And notice sensations, change things up, give yourself permission to adapt any movement to feel better for you. And if you're going in one direction, you could change that up and go in the opposite direction. And again, notice where you're feeling this. If you need to rest at any time because that feels better or another movement arises, go ahead and do that. And then when you're ready, I'm going to come all the way back to center and just take a moment here and notice the after effects of the movement. Notice the energy level in your neck, your upper shoulders, the upper back, the chest, and anywhere else you may feel it. I'm going to take that right hand and dangle it down. And then we're going to circle through that wrist slow and steady one direction and I highly recommend softening your gaze or closing your eyes so you take all of your awareness into that right wrist and you might notice different sensations you might want to take that hand into a soft fist or send the fingertips out wide and as far away from each other as you can get them what feels best for you and then we're going to take that round in the opposite direction, being really aware of everything our body is telling us. Again, giving yourself permission to change things up so it feels better for you, making it faster, slower, not doing it at all. And then we're going to release that hand down. Allow that arm to be as easy as possible as if you just got rid of the bones. 
And then from the shoulder, circling through the shoulder in one direction. Once again, more is not better here. So allowing yourself the ease of movement that suits you today. And that may be different from last week or yesterday. And it is going to be different from tomorrow too. Notice where you're feeling this. And again, always changing and adapting things for your own body. So we're working with the body, not against it. The next exhale, we're gonna pause and then take it around in the opposite direction. And that may feel very different. I know it does not my body for me. Feeling those sensations in different places, different sensations. end of the next exhale we're going to pause that and turn that right palm out inhaling up from the elbow exhaling down and if this feels better at a different angle from your body then please go ahead again no right and wrong you're giving yourself full permission to do this in your own way today from the shoulder, if you want to add on, keeping the joints easy. And again, more is not better here. You're working with simply what feels nice for you today. Option to stay here. That left hand can support you on the side of the chair. You can take those right fingertips overhead if you like. But again, if it feels better for you to keep that easy and a little slower, then go ahead. We're all put together completely differently and everything feels different for each and every one of us, depending on the day, how we're feeling, what we did yesterday, more or less, you've got one more to go unless you're already resting. And then when you're ready, taking that right hand back to support. Take a big breath in, exhale it out and settle the breath down. Take your awareness to your right arm all the way down to the fingertips and just simply notice, notice the echo of that movement. And then take your awareness to the left arm that hasn't moved yet and notice the difference. Left arm, when you're ready, dangles down. Again, allowing that to be soft. And then we take our awareness all the way down to the wrist and we start to circle in your own way. So maybe with those fingertips and thumbs wiggling and stretching out long, or maybe in a soft or tight fist, what feels better for you? It's a choose your own adventure. You get to decide. And then we'll go around in the opposite direction when you're ready. And play around. Notice if you um, allow it to be a little slower or faster, if that feels better for you. Make your own choices. And then when you're ready, you're going to allow that left hand to dangle down. And then moving, circling through the shoulder. And this may feel very different to the other side. Again, try and stay away from stories and just simply be aware of what's going on in your body as you move here. Play around with how much or how little you do, how fast or how slow it is, how big or small the movement is. And if there's tiny things you can do to adjust the movement so it feels different, When you're ready, we'll pause and take that round in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Again, tuning into your body. What are you feeling here and how are you feeling that? Last one, resting. Turning that palm out from the elbow, bending in and out. Again, the breath is guiding the movement always. Always working within the breath and with your body. 
If we work against the body, the body simply contracts and doesn't want to play. You can start to move from the shoulder if you like. Keep those joints nice and easy if that feels good for you. You can equally reach through those joints, so you lengthen your choice, or a little bit of both. That right hand can support you on the chair if you wish to take those left fingertips overhead towards the right. And again, give yourself permission to play. And a great way to tune into what feels best in your body is to close your eyes and allow your body to do what it is that it wants to. And if that is resting, then that's great. One more. Hands come back to support. Any kind of movement, you wanna ease any tension, go ahead. And from here, if you're sitting into the back of your chair, the option is to come forward, even if it's a centimeter or so, as we're going to start to move into flexion and extension of the spine. So we're gonna take those hands in front of us front of our heart, you can interlace the hands or just simply take the palms on top of each other, your choice. I find it a little easier for me to have them interlaced, thumbs to the sky. So on the inhale, you're gonna draw the hands in towards the heart, draw the shoulder blades towards each other and lift the heart up. So from here, we've got a little arch in the back, this is extension. On the exhale, keeping the head neutral for now, you're gonna draw the knuckles forward, belly comes back towards the spine, and we're rounding through the shoulders. Inhaling, hands come towards the heart, heart meets the hands, and on the exhale, we're rolling back. So it's gonna look something like this. But again, we're all put together differently deciding for yourself what feels right. If you want to get the head involved, we inhale, the chin lifts. On the exhale, draw the chin towards the chest and look down towards the earth, inhaling and exhaling. Now, if there is another way that you prefer to do this, or if your arms are tired, you can simply have the hands sliding up and down the upper legs as you extend and flex through the spine. Once again, tuning in to how you feel this in your body. Notice where you feel it in your body. When you're ready, on the next inhale, we'll draw the hands in towards the heart. Now you can stay here or wrap your hands back towards the side or even the back of the chair. Depending on the chair you're on, you can even thread your hands through, depending on the length of your bones, draw the shoulder blades in towards each other and lift up from that. So rather than just curving backwards, consider lengthening through from the pelvis up through those lower ribs and the curve comes in the thoracic spine up through the chest and the gaze lifts if the breath is steady, and we're here for three breaths, the breath is not steady, draw the chin in towards the chest and breathe steadily and easily, opening up through the chest, lengthening through the spine. Last breath here, releasing the arms, interlacing the hands in front of you, sending the knuckles away and sitting back into the hammock of the back. So we're sitting over onto the back of the pelvis, getting into the lower back here. Chin comes down if you want. And take your breath now into the back ribs. See if you can expand and soften those for another two breaths. Staying for the last exhale. And we're coming all the way up. And once again, any kind of movement you need to um, find some ease, then go ahead. Okay, so from here, we're gonna do um, a twist in the chair. So if there's another twist that you want to take, a simple twist, then you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, we're gonna take our feet all the way over to the right side of the chair. And I understand that 
We're all put together differently, so if you need to slide to the front of your chair because that's how you feel more grounded, then you can go ahead and do that. If, again, this doesn't suit you, no big deal because you don't feel um, stable and comfortable, you can simply do a gentle twist coming from the front. Otherwise, rooting to rise, coming back to that steady breath. Notice how your body feels here. Reaching that right hand to the side, the back of the chair, or even behind your seat. And then the left hand slides to the right thigh or even the back of the chair. And you can adjust yourself to find yourself in a more comfortable position. Rooting to rise. And then on exhale, we're twisting towards the back of the chair. Inhaling center and exhaling, twisting. Excellent place to stay right here. Or if you're comfortable, when we come to the twist, we can be staying there, breathing. You can take a gaze over that right shoulder, trying to allow those shoulders to rest downwards, away from the ears. Feet and seat, those sit bones and the soles of your feet are rooting downwards to get length through the spine. You can hover the hands if you're using that as leverage. So the muscles are wrapping around the spine have to do the work to hold you here. Another two breaths, unless you want to rest early. And then when you're ready after the last exhale, we're coming all the way back to center. From here, heel toeing to the front, and then over to the other side. So again, readjusting yourself so you feel stable and comfortable. Rooting down to rise up. The breath is steady. Hopefully here you feel as if it's a little effortless, just resting. Notice how you feel, how your body feels. Notice if you're anticipating anything. That left hand can come to the side of the chair. Depending on the kind of chair you're on and the range of motion you have, find a place that feels comfortable where that left shoulder is down and away from the ears. Right hand across to the left thigh or the back of the chair or anywhere else that is comfortable. We root to rise. Then on the exhale, we're twisting. Inhaling, we come out somewhat. Exhaling, twisting. Every twist, you have the off opportunity to soften or deepen that twist, whatever feels better for you. Remember, more is not better here. The gaze can come over that left shoulder. And then option to stay there, rooting through the feet and seat to rise from there. Option to hover the hands, and we've got three breaths here. Notice what's happening in your body, always listening to it above anything else, especially me. And then when you're ready, coming all the way back and coming back to center. Now take a moment here, come to a resting place, take a breath in, exhale it out and tune inwards. Notice how you feel after all that different movement. Notice your upper body and notice the lower body. And simply notice which sensations are present without putting a story to them. Just learning to build awareness to what is going on in our body and the effects of movement. From there, we're going to heel toe those feet out a little wider, and that's going to be different for each and every one of us. Toes are more or less tracking in the same um, trajectory as our knees, so you could check that out. And don't worry if one side is um, has more range of motion than the other. Just come to a place where above all else you feel stable and comfortable that it's sustainable. Rooting down through your feet just as we were before, sending those roots downwards, getting connected down with our seat as well, and lifting from there. Come back to that effortless breath. And notice if just by simply being here, feels like you just added a whole lot of effort. 
And if that's the case, is there anything you can do to make it feel a little more easeful? Give yourself permission. This is yoga is not about making things hard for yourself. It's about really listening to your body and changing things and adapting things to suit you. Again, working with your body and not trying to work against it. Hands are on the upper legs for support, rooting to rise. And then from here, you're gonna take those ribs round in a circle. And it may not feel like a circle, it may feel really choppy to start with. I really recommend softening your gaze or closing your eyes and starting to allow your body to take over the movement. So if it changes it for you, if it makes it smaller or bigger, Listen to what it is that your body is asking of you. Mm -hmm. Smoothing that out. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can get your shoulders, your head involved. Allow that to be an easy movement, as easy as you can make it. And then at the next exhale, I'm going to pause and take that round in the opposite direction. But again, this is your practice. So if something doesn't feel right, change it up, pause, take another movement if that feels preferable for you. Inhaling and exhaling the whole time. So if you notice you're holding your breath, See if you can do something to allow that to smooth out, ease full breath. Another couple here. Mm -hmm. Coming back to center. Nice. And then from here, we're just going to heel toe those feet in towards each other. Take a breath in. Exhale it out. Uh huh. And then from here, from this rootedness down, rising from there, this steady, effortless breath. You're gonna root down through the left foot, inhale up through the right heel, and exhale that down. Now you can just push into the ball of that right foot so the left heel get the right heel gets a little lighter, or you can lift it up. We're not concerned about how high it comes. What we're looking for is the smoothness of the movement. There's a whole lot that's going into allowing that movement, allowing that awareness to be present with every single part of the movement, allowing that to be as smooth as you possibly can. Now, drawing that heel down, really connect down to that left foot. Connect to the left foot and the seat, and we're lifting from there. So, whether you're manually moving or can lift that foot, um, right foot up just briefly, you notice that you feel quite steady. Now, if you need the support of the back of your chair to um, allow that to happen, please take it. Because from here, the add-on, which is totally optional, is inhaling, lifting the heel and pulling the foot up, exhaling down, and again, this is a steady movement. Now that foot does not have to come very high. In fact, it can just hover off the floor. You can do every other one. Notice what's happening in the rest of your body and try and allow the rest of your body to feel effortless or as effortless as possible. Notice where it is that you're feeling this. Keep the breath steady and smooth doesn't seem like a big movement, but when we repeat it slowly and steadily, it becomes more challenging. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're resting, taking that right foot down. Just take the knee and wash it in and out just to soften any tension that you may have built up in those hip flexors. Coming back to center. Now you can take the previous um, options and of course you can always manually move 
that leg up and down, getting that range of motion through the hip joint, or we're gonna add on from there. So, lifting up through the heel, staying on the ball of the foot to start with. And then to start with, we're lifting up through the knee, taking the foot forward as if we're cycling and drawing the ball of the foot back to um, lift, just simply resting on the floor, heel lifted. So we're inhaling forward and dragging the foot back. Mm -hmm. That's option number one. Now imagine that it's kind of like cycling. We're kind of cycling on a one-legged cycle and we're not really getting very far. So this is option number one. And with that foot resting on the floor, you can do every other one to give yourself a break. You go ahead. And of course, manually moving will maybe make things a little easier for you. You get to choose. Next option, if you want to, as we're lifting that entire foot up, the left foot and your seat and lifting from there is going to be helping you. And we're cycling with the right foot. Now again, more is not better. So imagine with the heel, you are creating a circle in the air as best as you can. And what we like to do is lift it up and drop it down because it's really challenging to keep that circle in a smooth and steady rhythm. Inhaling and exhaling. Notice if you need to allow that circle to be smaller or rest. We've got another three going in this direction. Really connect down with that left foot. And the next time we take that foot down, we're resting it. Hand on the knee and we're washing the knee in and out. Beautiful. Take a breath in. Exhale it out. Uh -huh, it's a lot of effort, right? Now we're going to go around in the opposite direction. So you still have the option of lifting up through the heel. We have the option of sliding the foot forward, lifting up and bringing back. So we're going in the opposite direction. And the next option is to cycle in the opposite direction, keeping that foot off the floor, maybe doing every other one, every third one. And with the heel, you're creating a circle in the air. Steady and smooth, it does not have to be big. And of course, you have the option of allowing your hands to take some of that weight, getting that range of motion through the knee, through the hip, with that support of your arms. You got another three here. The breath should be as effortless as possible. Rest if you need to. Root down through that left foot. One more. And then the next time that foot comes down, it's resting. Hand on the knee, washing it in and out. Beautiful. Coming back to center, taking a breath in, exhaling out. Coming to the other side. So that right foot that's probably, that whole right leg's probably a little bit tired now. You root that down, you've got the connection to the seat, and we lift up from there. Option number one, Lifting up through the left heel, exhaling down. With the breath, always working within the breath. Steady and slow movement. And we're not looking for a big movement, we're looking for control of the movement as best as we can. We're not looking at perfect, but we're trying to make that as smooth as we created that smooth breath. Mm -hmm. This is option number one, great place to stay. Option number two, rooting down through that right foot, just hovering the left foot so you feel some stability there. So you know what it is the rest of your body has to do to keep you supported as that foot is lifted and take it down. Okay, so from here, inhale, lifting up, exhale, tapping down. 
And keeping that, once again, not a huge movement unless you want it to be, but we want it to be steady and smooth. Inhaling and exhaling. Mm -hmm. And of course, the option is always there to manually help that left leg as it lifts and lowers. Two more. Noticing what the rest of your body is doing to compensate. And the next time that foot comes down, hand to the knee, and we're washing it in and out. Coming back to center, take a big breath in, exhale it out. We're almost done on this side. Okay, so the next option, if you do not want to continue doing any of the previous ones, is coming into that cycle. Rooting down through the right leg, lifting up from there, so our upper body and that right leg is our stability. Inhale, lifting up, dragging or taking the foot forward, and coming back. Inhaling, ball of the foot is down as we draw the whole foot back. And again, the option is there to manually move that because the joints are still getting a lot of that range of motion and you're still building stability, awareness, strength in the body. Mm -hmm. Next option is to keep that foot up not touching the floor, maybe every other one. Maybe you want to do every third one and rest. But with the heel in the air at the side of you, imagine that you're creating as close to a perfect circle as you can. It doesn't have to be a big circle, but we want it to be smooth. Using that right foot is going to help you get connected downwards to make that left leg a little lighter. And of course, you have the option to manually move. Mm -hmm. Another two, slowing it down, noticing your patterns. And then when that foot comes down, we rest. Hand to the knee, swishing in and out like a windshield wiper, just to soften any tension. Okay, coming back to center. We're going around in the opposite direction now. So, inhaling, tapping the foot forward and dragging it back. Oh no, we're going in the opposite direction, sorry. Inhale, sliding the foot forward and lifting and taking the heel back. Now you know lots of different options here. You can keep the foot on the floor, just lifting up through the heel or manually moving or allowing that leg to do it on its own, whatever suits you. Option, last option is to lift the foot off the floor, maybe for every other one or keep going. So we're cycling in the opposite direction and keeping that as steady as possible. And again, things get tiring, the option is to Give your leg a little bit of help with your arms and that may or may not be comfortable for you. We have another three. Keep the breath steady. Use that right leg and the lifting through the spine to allow your body to manage. Next time that foot comes down, it stays. Hand to the knee, windshield wipering, in and out. Beautifully done. Take a big breath in, exhale it out, and notice how this feels. Even close your eyes, go inside, and pay attention. From here, I'm going to take that right leg out and extend it. So, for some of you, you might want to come back on your chair because it feels more stable. You can use the side of your chair for stability. Or for some of you, you might want to slide forward. So, you're sitting on the edge of your chair, which will give you less support. Keeping that right leg extended, heel to the floor. I'm going to spread those toes really nice and wide and then 
curl the toes up into a little fist, spreading them really nice and wide, back towards you, pushing the ball of your foot away from you, and then curling the toes up. Now, if you're prone to cramping, then keep this movement as soft as feels manageable. Mm -hmm. See if you can relax the rest of your leg and through the ankle, just as you're moving everything through the toes. Next time those toes are up, we're gonna keep them there, heel to the floor. And from here, pointing and flexing the foot. I'm gonna bring this back so you can, act. my foot is actually in the shot. Pointing and flexing, it's almost in the shot. Mm -hmm. Allowing your heel to stay on the floor. If you have a TheraBand, then, um, and it's easier for you, you can lasso around the widest part of your foot, the ball of the foot, and use that to pull back the toes if that helps. But again, we're working within what the body feels comfortable, not pushing everything. Next time those toes come up towards the ceiling, we can keep them there. Option to slide that out towards the side somewhat, and we're gonna circle through the ankle. But not only through the ankle, notice that my upper femur bone is also coming along for the journey. So I put my hand into my hip socket there. The entire leg is at work here. Keeping a little bend in that knee, that leg does not have to be straight. I should have said that in the beginning. Allow this to be adapted to your body. And then from there, we're gonna go around in the opposite direction. Keeping it smooth and steady. And again, smooth and steady is relative. Beautiful. Next time the toes come up, we're gonna move that heel more forward. Keep connected down with that left foot rooting down to rise. We've been here a lot today. Hands come onto the top of that leg and depending on the length of your bones, pushing into your hands to lift up through the chest, but roll the shoulders back and down, draw the shoulder blades towards each other so we have this beautiful open heart. Excellent place to stay right here. And drawing the toes back, you already might notice a sensation through the back of the leg somewhere that's the case, then this is where you stay. Steady, easy breaths. Option, keeping that chest wide, sending the tailbone out behind you, but drawing the front ribs in, so we're really supporting the lower back. Option with that long spine coming forward. And we're hinging, I'm gonna come from the other side so you can see me, hinging from the hips rather than rounding through the back. So we're really keeping the back body connections awake and alert. It's not gonna take very much to wake up the back of that right leg. And again, if your ribs are popping forward, as I know mine like to, draw the front ribs in to support the lower back and notice how that changes things as if you could send that tailbone out behind you with that knitted in ribs, collarbones are wide. Use the support of your left thigh to maybe push yourself up. If you need less sensation, draw yourself down. If you need more, steady, easy breaths here. Imagine that you could breathe into all the sensations of your body. And notice how every exhale you have the opportunity to allow those sensations to soften. Always listening to your body, noticing if you need to come out early or do less. Steady and stable. And then when you're ready, using the support of that left thigh, we're coming all the way up and drawing that leg in. Any movement you need to ease things out, go ahead. And we're drawing that left foot forward. 
leg extended, but that knee does not have to be straight. You can use the chair for support if you need to. And this side may feel different, so coming back or forward on your chair depending on the support you need. We're spreading the toes wide, but pushing the ball of the foot forward and then crunching up those toes as if we were making a fist with our hand, but it's our foot. Inhaling and exhaling. Mm-hmm. Notice if you're really tightening into the leg and the ankle and see if you can keep that soft and loose but really preparing to just allow those toes to do the work. Now, the toes, the ligaments from the toes are um, not just in the toes, so the rest of the leg is doing somewhat work, but uh, we do tend to tense the whole leg when we're doing something that we don't need that tension for. Option to keep doing that or keep the heel to the floor, toes coming up. This is the inhale, exhale, we're pointing the toes down towards the floor and drawing back on the inhale. Rooting down through that right foot is gonna help you feel a little bit more stable here. Inhaling and exhaling, really moving through that ankle. And you might notice here, um, the sensations differing between when you point the foot um, more towards the front of the leg and when you draw the toes up more towards the back of the leg and everything in between. Next time those toes come up, option to leave them there. You can stay here to circle through the ankle or extend that left foot out towards the side. That just gives you a little external rotation which makes it a little easier for most of us to circle through the entire leg coming all the way up to the hip. So if I put my hand on my hip joint there, I can actually feel movement all the way up into the pelvic um, socket there. Now we're not looking for perfect circles, but we're trying to smooth the movement as always. And that right foot is our foundation. And then when you're ready, We'll take it around in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautifully done. And then from here, drawing the toes up, replacing the heel in more so it's in line with the hips more or a comfortable distance for you. Rooting down through that right leg. Now we are coming forward, so if you need to slide back for support, please go ahead. Hands supporting you on the top of the right leg. Toes are spread and lifting up towards the sky, pushing through the ball of the foot. From here, lifting up through the crown of the head so the spine is alert and awake. Widening through the collarbones for the shoulder blades are together to open up that chest. Now, as we do that, what tends to happen is we overarch the back. So I'm going to invite you to draw the front ribs in, helping support um, all the way around the abdominals, lower abdominals. With that, with that wide heart, you're going to come forward. And it's not going to take very much if those toes are up towards the sky to wake up sensation down the back of that leg. Again, any sensation directly in the knee joint, please take a micro bend in that knee. We are not in the business of um, stretching and damaging any tendons or ligaments around the knee. And we'll know we're working within the body's capacity because the breath is easy. As soon as we hold our breath, then we can start pushing past what is um, what feels natural and easy to the body. You can come down a little further as long as those um, belly, that belly, those ribs are drawn in towards the um, spine, heart is open. You can always come out. You can always do something completely different. And another few breaths here. I highly recommend softening your gaze, breathing in to the sensations in your body might even notice how every exhale you can allow those sensations to soften just a little. 
being gentle with yourself and compassionate, not pushing past where it's comfortable. And when you're ready, opening your eyes, lifting your gaze, and then drawing your shoulders back over your hips and drawing the feet in. From here, hands to the knees, just washing those knees from side to side. You can do it one at a time or both together, depending on what feels comfortable and stable for you. And then from there, we're gonna sit back into the chair so you have a little bit more support, bringing the hands in towards each other, palms towards each other. You can interlace the hands or take soft fists, your choice. And then we're gonna figure of eight through the wrists. And the more the ribs, um, the elbows are drawn into the ribs, the elbows um, being as they're static, the wrist has to do a whole lot more. Or you can allow that to flow a little more easily, your choice. One is not better than the other. Again, play around with what feels good. And then we're going to pause and go around in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. Steady and smooth breath, winding everything down. Then we'll release those fingers and spread those fingers out as wide as we can, just like we did with our toes, and then curl them up slowly into fists. Inhaling, spreading them wide, and exhaling, curling them into fists two more times. And notice sensations as you do this. Very important to get through all the range of motions in the joints so we get that synovial fluid flowing. When you have soft or tight fists, we're just going to stay there and circle through the wrists one more time, just like we did in the beginning, only we did it one at a time. And then we're going to take that round in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And then from there, shake that out. Any movement you need in your body for any last little bits of softness, go ahead. We're sitting back into the chair. Now, if you have somewhere more comfortable you want to be for relaxation, like a bed or a sofa or the floor close by and that feels better for you, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I'm going to give you a moment to settle in to that support underneath you. When you're ready, take a breath in, exhale it out slow and steady. Another couple of breaths just like that. Starting to soften the gaze, lower the gaze or even close the eyes. Become aware of the space you're in, the walls, the ceiling, the floor. Become aware of the chair you're in or the support you have underneath you, wherever you may be. <coughs> Excuse me. And allow your body to rest into that support. Then take your awareness inside as we start to tune out the outside world. And at any point, you can always tune out my voice. Imagine as if your bones could really deepen into that support. So you have to do a whole lot less, any tension and tightness in your body. Give it permission to relax and release even just 1% with every breath. Notice some particularly stubborn parts in your body if you have them, where no matter how much you release it, then the tension starts to creep back in. And if there's anything you can do here to release that tension, by taking some self-massage or a little movement or adjusting your body in some way, please go ahead and do that. Allow the breath to come back to its own natural rhythm. And as 
you let everything start to settle a little bit like when you shake up a snow globe this is the settling down of that snow into the bottom of the snow globe it's the settling of the energy in the body that by moving we just did a little bit of shaking You can even imagine that, sense it or feel it as little specks of light, of energy settling down towards that support, all the support you have underneath you. And as you allow that to happen, allow the thoughts to settle too, just like that shaken snow globe. Settling in, settling down. distractions or disruptions that you become aware of, just allow them to drift away. As you imagine, feel, a sense, that little bits of energy that may have sparked up, settling back down into that deep support underneath you. And even allowing that settled energy to slide down into roots, just like at the beginning of class, down into the earth, sending all that energy downwards. Stay here for as long as you like, tuning my voice out, allowing yourself to rest deeply for as long as you need to. Or for those of you who would like to finish your practice up without changing a thing, without blinking your eyes open, just simply tune in to that support underneath you once more allowing any tension to dissolve so you can utilize that support as much as you can. Imagine, sense or feel the space around you, the size of the space and where you are within that. Notice how you feel. Notice how your energy feels. Settle your awareness on your breath as best as you can, with no expectation. And starting to allow that breath to become a little more mindful in and out. Maybe in through the nose, out through the mouth, in a soft sigh, releasing tension. stay as you are or allow your body to start to awaken in its own time in its own way any movements that just feel natural and organic to you go ahead and we shall settle back into a place where you would like to finish your practice that may be exactly as you are or However you choose, 
And wherever you are, we settle into the support underneath you. Rising from there, hands coming into heart center, or another gesture that suits. And tune in, go inside, notice how you feel. Take a breath in, exhale, chin comes down towards the chest. Thank yourself for this time, for being here today, for moving, for choosing what it is that you needed to do above all else. From my heart to yours, namaste.